Looking back at the 90s, it truly was an innovating time in technology as a whole, let alone video games. Doom took the world by storm as one of the leading innovations of the FPS genre, improving on id's previous Wolfenstein 3D with such great features like stairs and angles. Although Doom wasn't actually 3D, more of a very advanced 2D to my understanding, it would eventually make that breakthrough with Quake, a full 3D take on the first person shooter genre that they had become synonymous with, inventing even. With vertical aiming and everything, it was great. But in December of 1999, one of its programming powerhouses, John Carmack, would release the engine's source code to the public for anyone to use as they please, and eventually, a little startup located in Seattle, Washington, known as Valve, would use that to create their gold source, and eventually, source engines, of which were used to make such hits as Half-Life, Half-Life 2, and Team Fortress 2. It was to be expected that with engines derivative of the Quake engine source code, that quirks and technical oversights just might go with it. Quake featured a sort of mechanic that players could take advantage of in the form of rocket jumping. By no means was this intended, but it later became quite popular. By blasting your feet, you could launch yourself at the cost of a bit of health, and it would feature in other games like Marathon and, again, Team Fortress 2. Quake built a foundation for anyone to use, which helped its modding community thrive, and it's upon that foundation that we're building today's feature presentation. Bzz. But before that, I wanted to say a few words. Recently, on April 13th, news got out that Rick May, voice of such classics as Peppy Hare in the Star Fox series, and a lot of the humongous entertainment educational games, and of course, Soldier of Team Fortress 2, passed away due to the recent COVID-19 pandemic. I, like many people, I'm sure, was pretty devastated by this, although it didn't hit me as hard as some other people in the community, and I feel like it's easy to blind yourself to the fact that we are all mortal. The people you care about, even if not directly, will eventually pass away, and we should celebrate them even in the aftermath of their death. I'm always hit with this wave of jaded cynicism, I guess, as if I had forgotten it was possible for such legends that brought me so much entertainment could... This episode has been long in the works for some time, right around a year on and off. I put it on hold due to a hard drive failure where I lost everything for the video. Script, audio, editing, that video was done, and I put off posting it and I put off posting it with the intention to put it up on January 1st of this year. And I lost it because of that, because of moving stuff around and upgrading my computer. It was the news that Soldier died that made me want to finish this video properly, with a new script and footage, and while I don't think any of it's as good as what I had in the first place... I don't think anything ever would be as good, personally. This is my own little send-off to a voice acting veteran who gave it all for his galaxy, his country, and kids' education, I guess. Uh, any project he was involved in, from big to small, he gave his all, and you could tell that. I don't think I could ever forget the memorable lines and taunts and scenes that he brought to a character that's potentially the funniest and most memorable of the nine mercenaries in the game. This video is for you, Rick, wherever you may be. You were good, son. Real good. Maybe even the best. Godspeed, you magnificent bastard.
The airstrike and the base jumbo were released on June 18th, 2014, during the Love and War update, probably one of the most regarded updates of recent memory, along with one of the best regarded shorts ever made. Expiration date. An alleged scrap of what was supposed to be a TF2 Adult Swim pilot. The weapons, at first glance, were definitely meant to complement one another with their stats and uses reflecting off each other in this sort of mirror fashion. The airstrike at its core was meant to be an air tool taking advantage of the air, a place TF2 players have historically ignored while playing, even though soldiers literally thrive the best there. The base jumper was meant to have you hover in the air until you reach the ground or retract the parachute, which initially you could deploy and undeploy, I guess, over and over. But we'll discuss that in a little more detail later, but that was the overall idea. The items weren't inherently unique in their concept. They wanted to promote rocket jumping to new players by giving them an item that could benefit more greatly from it. Before them, we had the Market Gardener, which guaranteed critical hits upon landing a successful melee blow while rocket jumping. The issue was this skill takes hours to master, considering the two factors needed, both the ability to rocket jump and the ability to melee hit an enemy within the very small time frame that you would have, typically. It was definitely not a new user-friendly weapon, and users could pair it with the rocket jumper or the gunboats to negate or minimize blast damage from themselves at the risk of becoming potentially less effective. This was the extent of promoting rocket jumping to players before Love and War, outside of it being well known that soldiers thrive best when utilizing it. Valve has been well known to want to promote new playstyles with their weapon inclusions, ranging from Demo Man's Swords to the Engineer's Gunslinger, and I think this was an excellent inclusion in concept. Starting with the Soldier as a class, there are some things you should probably know. Did you know the Soldier's rockets are subject to damage drop-off? You probably did, it's well known. I didn't, but you probably did. But do you know how the damage fall-off is calculated? It sounds pretty self-explanatory, but it's a little more complicated than you might think. Typically, damage drop-off is calculated through the distance a bullet or projectile travels through the air. In theory, the same applies to soldiers' rockets, but due to quirks in the aforementioned Quake engine and Valve's famous use of spaghetti code, Soldier can actually travel faster than his rockets, and this becomes an issue when you take into account that rockets don't determine their damage drop-off on distance traveled, but rather Soldier's distance to the target. So using a method called bombing, a soldier can launch a rocket at his target, rocket jump closer to the target in quick succession, usually launching more rockets while in the air for a massive amount of blast damage to be focused into one point. Because they're technically closer to the target than when they started, the rockets do the absolute most damage than if they had traveled all the way from where they started and the soldier stayed stationary. Does it sound complicated? It's not in practice, usually, only in explanation, although it is problematic for the airstrike and the base jumper as a combo. Before we continue, let's discuss their stats first. With the airstrike, you take 15% less damage from rocket jumping. You have an increased attack speed and smaller blast radius while you're rocket jumping, you get a clip size for every kill, up to 4 kills, but you have a minus 15% damage penalty and a minus 10% explosion radius. With the base jumper, you can deploy a parachute. That's it. You do have decreased mobility in a recent nerf, and once you retract it, it cannot be deployed again. There's a couple notes that I want to make clear. They're not terribly important, but you should probably know them. The airstrike mentions both a smaller blast radius and a smaller explosion radius. One time it says it applies while blast jumping, and the other just says that it has a smaller explosion radius overall. I'm not sure if these are two different things, or which stat actually applies if they are both the same thing, but I'll leave that up to you, and I would like to know if anybody could possibly make this, you know, clear for me. The second thing, and this is something I only recently found out, apparently, again, due to Valve's 
infamous use of spaghetti code, killing a demo man who's using the Islander or any of its reskins will give you the heads that they've collected and vice versa. Meaning if you're lucky, you could go from 4 to 8 rockets with just one kill. The same can be done with the Islander, but I didn't know you could do this with the Airstrike. And all of that makes for a fairly unique pair of weapons. Sure, the Market Gardeners always benefited from rocket jumping, but it's more of a mastery weapon useful to those who already know what they're doing. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, we've got the Rocket Jumper, a weapon devoted solely to learning the basic mechanics of the art of launching yourself with explosive ordnance at dangerous speeds. Somewhere in the middle, I'd argue we have the Airstrike, a weapon to promote the act, ensuring that you achieve perfection through practice. Its stats definitely reflect the mentality, with a clip size increase on kill, increased attack speed on rocket jump, and less self damage on rocket jumping to boot, it's truly its specimen that I'd recommend using to become familiar with rocket jumping and attacking while doing so. I'm typically fairly skeptical of weapons in the game that seem to require another weapon or situation to be useful in most cases, and with good reason I would say. But the base jumper and the airstrike seem to actually be marketed as being paired with one another. They have the same color scheme, they came out in the same update, and one obviously makes the other apparently more powerful. They should work well together, right? Well, yes, but actually no. The airstrike, while theoretically makes great use of the base jumper in all of the right ways, letting you dangle in the air while racking up those kills. However, I've already covered the soldier's damage drop off and how that works. The base jumper actually makes the soldier do overall less damage than if he were just rocket jumping as normal and performing the act of bombing, which I've also already described. The base jumper keeps you from getting closer any faster, it keeps you a far length away, and I'd argue you'd be more effective just walking at the enemy in a straight line with the stock rocket launcher, at least then you're closing that gap and you have a better chance of avoiding any other projectile or bullets flying at you. You are a sitting duck with this thing. The base jumper, when looking at all of this, is completely useless for anyone who's actually attempting to better themselves at rocket jumping. Of course, the base jumper can be paired with the Market Gardener to make landing those crits really easy in a few scenarios, since many players are generally unaware of surroundings, as it is a free game, and that means anybody can play, no matter what shitty laptop they're playing on. In conclusion, I'd personally say forget about this thing for Soldier. Demo Man may be a different story, but that's for another time. It's really only useful for new players, but in my eyes it produces similar results as playing with bots, it just creates bad habits. And moving on to the airstrike, it's a pretty decent weapon I think. With its fire rate in the air, its ability to hold more rockets with each kill, even taking into account the overall damage reduction, a soldier utilizing their skill set in the best way possible, I think could definitely make splendid use of it. Still, with faster rockets, bombing may be overall less effective, but that's for someone far more scientifically inclined than I am to calculate the perks and drawbacks of all of that. It's certainly a usable weapon, and I still see a fair number of soldiers using it quite often. It's probably my favorite non-stock option for the sheer usefulness of it, despite my actual lack of skill. Short has smaller explosion radiuses than other launchers, meaning you have to be far more accurate, but it could be a good alternative training tool for aiming your rockets, leading, direct hitting, and whatnot. With all that said, I think it's safe to say these weapons as a combo are pretty bad. You need to be really close to your enemies to do a good bit of damage with soldiers' rocket launchers, and the base jumper more or less restricts your ability to do that. Alone, they have their uses. The base jumper can be used as a market gardener trainer, and it can be equipped on demo if that's your sort of thing, and the airstrike with proper utilization can deal a great bit of damage with the sheer amount of rockets you can have at one time if you're doing really well. And proper rocket jumping technique, even despite a smaller blast radius, it could definitely have a lot of potential in the right hands, and even in the wrong ones, it might even help you aim better at least. 